welcome welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back to another tutorial when it comes to our crafters companion products and welcome to halloween so we're just a couple of weeks away uh, from halloween well we are a couple of weeks away from when we are filming and watching this so i thought right let's delve in to some of our halloween collections i thought let's delve into our halloween frame nest and dies and we'll incorporate a little bit of All Hallows' Eve, the cardstock, and maybe a stamp or two. But I thought, let's also bring in our shimmer sprays as well. Let's do our shimmer sprays. Let's use these ones to create a little bit of a background. And then, of course, we can then start to layer up all of these individual components. I think maybe even start to convert that into a bit of a shaker card as well. Um, that's the direction that I'm going. So in the back of my mind, I've got my sequins all ready to go. I think as well, I might bring in... I like using microbeads. I'm going to bring these ones in as well. Just some microbeads. I love to use these ones. So let's get them set up, ready to go as well. So yeah, as I said, thought let's do something Halloween. Let's incorporate these products. Let's bring in my favourite um, frame nest and dies. Uh, we have got, we're going to be using the, where have I popped them? We're going to be using the spider silk i love that one i love that one it's a really really fab one with all of the cobwebs but i thought think as well what we'll do is we'll build up the layers now what i mean by that is we'll maybe do one frame within foam pads that middle frame within foam pads as well building up that central depth when it comes to using them as the shaker element so that's what we are going to be doing when it comes to uh this live here we're going to do it completely from scratch right away from the beginning gonna bring in as i said we're going to use one of probably one of the sentiments from the all hallows eve we'll use the all hallows eve linen cardstock as well but the first thing that i want to do is i want to do our spritz background now the only component that i've already done and layered ready to go is this background because of course i need to let it dry so therefore what we're going to do is let's go from up ahead here what we're going to do is let's bring these both in now i've got summer meadow and i've got iced silver so i'm just going to give these a roll just to get all of that incredible shimmer just turning in their pots here so we're just going to get them going and then what we're going to do as well is let's then go in and then let's take my cardstock now i'm just going to do this onto our white multi-purpose cardstock you can do it on your watercolour cardstock, of course, but I'm not. And I'm going to cut this to five by seven. I'll double check the actual measurement of the one that I've already done and that's already dried. So I'll check them ones just shortly. But I'm going to bring these in. I'm going now, usually I do this over my bin, but of course. I can't do it over my bin because then you won't see. So I'm going to do it, of course, from straight up. So I've got my, my cardstock here. And what we're going to do is I am just going to give it a light spritz in my bin just to get that started. And I'm going to give it a spritz over. I'm going to then do exactly the same when it comes to the iced silver. So let's give that a nice spritz i'm going to come down just a little bit more at the bottom and then what i'm going to do is i'm really going to spritz heavy along the top so if i go heavy along the top and then i'm just going to let that drip i'm going to let that drip i'm going to let that travel all the way down and we're going to let it go and then i'm going to let it go so far and then I'm going to lay it flat and then let it naturally do its thing when it comes to drying. So you can see how that looks. So that's kind of going to stay within that travelled aspect because I'm now laying it flat. So if I then, I'm just going to move that to the side of me here. And then I'm going to bring in the one that I've already done. It's already dried and I have matte and layered. This is the only part, the only component that I've already matte and layered and got good to go. So I've cut that to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So the spritz layer is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I've given myself just a little framed layer with the purple linen cardstock. 
book. That's from our All Hallows Eve. And I've just popped three black gems in the top and bottom corner. So that's the only bit that I've done. I have lifted on foam pads here. The only bit that I've done ready to go because, of course, I need to let that dry. So let's move that out the way and then let's come in with our dies here. So I'm going to bring my, let's bring in my white multi-purpose again. Let's also bring in some purple. So let's go dive in with the purple. And let's just start with the cutting. So I'm going to start with the cutting. I'm going to bring my plates in too. And let's go and take the two dies or the two main dies here. I've got the frame ones as well, of course. So if I take the outer die and I'm going to do the inner die as well. And with the inner die, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the largest. I'm going to do them both separate because what I'm wanting is with the largest frame die, I'm going to use the smallest rectangle. And then when it comes to the frame inner frame, I'm then going to use the largest rectangle. That will all become apparent later on. It's just so that the levels can sit on each other. So let's chop this up, make that a little bit smaller. So let's chop and then let's pop our dies. So let's take my washi tape that I'm still trying to use up. So let's level and frame that up. Level and frame. Now, of course, if you're going to use your large Gemini, you'll be able to do both layers at once. But you know that I prefer the junior plate. So let's take the junior plates. I'm going to use the full plate configuration here that we would normally do. So I'm going to bring that in. Let's then run that one through. Let's switch it on first. That will help. So let's bring that in. That's then, of course, just going to run through, do the cutting. I don't need my embossing that because I don't need to emboss it. So let's take that one and then let's pop all of these out carefully. So let's take that one and that's that one. Let's bring in my pokey tool as well. So I'm just going to pop all of these out. Of course, if you've got your dye brush, you can use that as well. Mine's is just to the side, but I don't know why. I just find it, I don't want to say easier, maybe more therapeutic to just pop out. So we're just going to pop them out like so. Let's work our way in. Just getting all these little bits out. All these little ones. Die cuts just like a dream. In actual fact, these little bits would be good for shakers as well. Because they're really small, teeny pieces, but they're different little shapes as well. They're not uh, they're not the same. So there's my main outer frame. So for this one, we're going to do that again, but we're going to do it within the purple. So let's take these ones as well. So let's take all of that and let's take that. Pop that on. If I was more careful, I could have used that inner layer, but... Hold. That can just go out the way. Let's take that and then once again, let's just chop that. Line these ones back up once again in the same way. And then I'm just going to press that in. Hopefully there's enough stick there to hold that. And press that in, bring our plates back in, make sure that's not moved. Line up the plate configuration, pop it 
back in and repeat that process. We're going to do a drop shadow with this, if you probably hadn't, hadn't have gathered already. Doing the drop shadow, let's bring in my dye tool and sponge mat, just to make this fit a little bit quicker. So, move all that out the way, move that out the way. So, because I was more careful with this layer, I will be, not that one, I would be able to use that one at a later date. So let's carefully take that off and carefully take that off. Once again, it will become apparent just shortly as to why with this large outer frame, I've used the smaller rectangle and then the smaller die, I've used the largest rectangle. So I'm going to then pop all these last little bitties out like so so that is my two largest frames if I then take the make this smaller die with the largest rectangle these two so we're going to do that again in both the white and the purple so let's line these ones up. So get that into position here. And move that one in. Pop it in. And then line these up. So we're going to feed that one through. So quite repetitive this process but as I always say when it comes to these tutorials these videos I do prefer to do them all in real time so you see exactly what I'm doing I don't skip anything or jump forward on anything so let's work our way around with these ones There. So any last little bits, I'm going to take that one and that's that one and then last one for this bit, bring in our card and then take that one out, see if I can salvage any of that, just enough to hold it down. Like so. So I'm running that one back through. Line up, position. And then feed through. So I will need to grab some acetate in a moment. That's not quite... I don't think I jumped camera there, did I? Oh well. All that was doing was just moving all these little bits out. I think I left you on the, uh, the Gemini. All that I done was just popped out all these little bits. Um, here we go. Let's take these last little bits into here. What I'm also going to do, just, I don't know if it's going to work or not, so I'm going to cut it anyway, so I've got it just in case. If I take these last little bits out so that's that all done I'll get rid of that I'll get rid of that and that and that so clear my die let's move that, that and that out the way clear my die and then what I'm thinking will I be able to use that uh, I could, I actually want, I want it a bit bigger with what I'm thinking. So is that going to fit? No. No. So, let's go back into... Have we got any purple left? 
I've got another pack, but I don't really want to open it unless I have to. So let's take... This one should do. Okay, just a thought I've had. It's just going to give it a little bit extra detail away in the background. So we'll see if this is going to work when I come round to doing it. So plates, same plate configuration, and then we're just going to then run that one through. I'm going to lean over and get some acetate. Take up on the acetate. Here we go, let's bring that in, bring these in, and move that out of the way for now. I don't think I'll need them again. You never know, you just never know. Change my mind so, so many times. Right, so let's take, move all that, clean that. Move that, and then let's pop these little bits out. And then we can then start to create. So I'm going to do a five, maybe it's a bit bigger than five by seven, but a top full card. So that's that. All that's now done. Now let's bring in these back in, because what I want to do is do my drop shadow. So I'm going to do white on the top. So white on the top with the purple on the bottom. Plus what I'm also doing, or I'm not overly concerned about doing, and is that's getting glue on all of the tiny little bits of spider webs. I'm going to... Just go around that main outer frame. And that's all that I'm going to do. I'm not bothered about going to the edge of the spider web. Let's make sure that I've got this the right way. So I've not. Didn't think I would have. Might have known that would happen. So let's... Line all of that, bring that in delicate frame or delicate drop shadow. FYI, I'm making a Halloween card and I've got Christmas music on that you can probably just hear in the background. Let's position that in. Try and get that as correct as I can. Slide that in. And then there we go. I've got my drop shadow there. Let's do the same with our next one. This one, I'm going to go around the outer edges. I'm going to do little bits of the spider web inside, kind of like the main, the main outer edge. So I got some fluff or something in my mouth. You know when you can just feel something, whether it's a bit of fluff or eyelash or something, hair. You can just feel it in your mouth. It's gone now. There we go. Might have known I would have done it the wrong way again. So this time we're going to do a drop shadow. But what I'm going to do is obviously when it's you do your drop shadow, you're left with a little bit of the drop shadow cardstock just popping out one side. So I'm going to get that drop shadow in the middle here. And then I'm just going to trim away that little bit of purple that's popping out 
on the outside. And then the reason that I done the smaller frame first, and then I came along with the largest frame. So I done the smallest frame. Did I do the smallest one? Yes. The smallest rectangle with the largest frame. And then the largest rectangle with the smaller frame here. The reason I done that is so that that will be able to sit over the top. It's got a little bit of space for that to sit over the top. Overlaps ever so slightly. So that's why I done that. So let's trim that. So I'm just trimming away the purple that's left over. And that's that. So what I'm then going to do for this one is let's bring in my acetate. Let's bring in my red liner tape for this. I'm just going to use my thin 3mm acetate. So we're going to travel. Here's my, my, my favourite scissors, where the god. No, nope, that's not mine. Here we go. So let's travel around with my red liner tape. So I'm going to go nicely into there. So I don't need to worry too much about the edges meeting with the red liner tape. It's when I come along and use the foam strips. And then what I'm going to do as well is just roughly, just roughly cut around it, just so that I know that I've got the right amount. Let's scrape the backing off. It's our construction, so it's our heavyweight acetate that I'm using. So if I peel that off. And that off, that off, and then that off. So you can either go right to the corner, or I just plop it in the middle, and then I chop around it. So let's cut all the way around, following the edges. Getting rid of all of that excess acetate. I think that's it. So there's that. And then let's bring in my foam pad strips. So I'm going to use the really, really thin ones. Now we've got the same ones in our Crafter's Companion foam pad bundle and they're in the small foam pad bundle and that is your strips so let's work our way around here all the way around the edge meeting up And then come in right there. And then let's finish that one off along the bottom. Just making sure we've got that close contact. Snip that away. So then that's going to be my outer so that's then going to go on top of there so this is where i'm going to create extra depth for when it comes to my shaker elements so i'm going to take all of that i'm going to do it and position that into there and then that into there and then let's just lift, let's just move that 
back and because I need to make sure I've got a really good seal because of course I don't want anything falling out. Press that in. Let's bring in some more. Have we got any left with just the the thicker? Let's bring in Yeah, here we go. I'm going to use the thicker ones that you get. And I'm going to overlap that so it's covering any excess sticky pad from underneath. So that can travel all the way around because of because this is going to be lifted up. There could have been a chance that some of the sequins may stick to that mid layer, which I don't want. So therefore, I'm just going to eliminate that by overlaying. Let's bring that into there. I'm just trying to help myself there by taking that back and off. I'm going to leave that on just now. So then that's me got my my double layer when it comes to frameworks. I've got my chunky mid-tone layer. And what do I need to do now? Let's so let's bring in our card blank. So I've got my top fold card blank here. And it's five and a half by seven and a half. I knew it was five by something. Five and a bit by something and a bit. And Bring in a white card, so I'm going to, I'm going to have to go to my stash to get another pack of the linen card. There we go. It's already opened. I've obviously had to delve into it already beforehand. So we need another one of this purple. Let's take that. Let's move that. And then we're just going to start to do the basis of our mats and layers. There's my guillotines behind me. So because my card blank is five and a half by seven and a half, I want a nice nice mat and layer all the way around. So let's do let's do five by seven. And then natural fat. I might I'm even going to let's have a look. Yeah, so five by seven is good. And then I'm going to give myself a small framed mat and layer. Um, what was that? Five by seven. So I'm going to go five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it ever so slightly. So then that's going to give me a really, really nice but thin mat and layer. So it's just going to give me a delicate purple mat and layer for there. So that's going to then go onto there. That's then going to go onto there. That's then going to go onto there. But what I'm thinking, just to create just that little bit of interest away in the background. So I could overlook. So when you're seeing in, you're seeing the depth and you're seeing a way, way, way in to the base. And then you can see that spider web. So that's my thinking. I think we'll go with that. So I'm going to start to position this one. So let's work my way right. So I'm going to go around the outer frame here so this one because this is going to be right on the base and I don't really want any of the sequence or anything like that to be jarring inside I'm going to try and glue glue down most most of my um, spider webs Let's work our way into there. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to press too hard just now. I'm going to try and get that as central as I can possibly get it. If it's a little bit out, I'm not overly concerned because that's going to look like an additional kind of drop shadow. Plus, depending on which way you're tilting the cardstock. So I'm kind I'm really kind of happy. I am happy with that. Yep. Happy with that. So let's take the glue off my hands. Press that in. And then let's take... Before we assemble all of that, let's do a little sentiment. So if I bring in my white multi-purpose that I've got. So I'm going to cut... Let's see. How deep is the sentiment? I think I'm sure there's Happy Halloween on this one, isn't there? Yeah, Happy Halloween. So that is about one inch. So I'm going to go up to the one inch, but I'm going to come to the left hand side of that one inch mark. Just, just fits in no more, which is perfect. Let's come in with a bit of purple. So we're going to come to just over, or probably just before the one and a quarter inches. So I'll get a really, th relatively thin matting layer. What I'm going to do is I'll probably do... Let's just cut it to five and a half at the moment. I'll trim it smaller, but just to make it easier for me to fit in this way and trim a little slither. So let's add that in. Add here. Add that. Yeah, that'll be fine. So let's take my, where's my stamping platform? Bring this one in here. So let's, so what was the width of my spritzed layer? It is four and a quarter. Did I say four and a quarter? Four and a quarter, yeah. So let's trim this to the four and a quarter so I can kind of gauge what is exactly the halfway point. So let's use this my pencil. Just going to put a little pencil mark just at the half just lightly at the halfway point just so I know where the halfway point is. On here. Let's pop that down um, and then come along with my stamp. So again I know exactly where my halfway point is. So let's line it up and it's just going to fit because of the way that I've sized it. I'm going to use my alcohol proof noir black. Using that one so I get that strong sentiment. Press that. There we go. Perfect. Beautifully nice and strong. And so that's that and that's that. Let's take, let's do my trusted ice grapes you know how much i love doing that and i do it with pretty much everything so let's bring the bubbles all the way around into place into here So 
So. And. Right, where was my. Is that the layer? Yes, it was. So let's bring that in. Let's add my tape or whichever form of adhesive you're using. I'm just going to keep my purple cardstock the length it is at the moment and then I'll trim, trim afterwards. At least my white cardstock is at the size that I need. Let's also take my eraser as well. Let's just take off that little pencil notch. Bring the guillotine in. Even although I've got that straight edge, for some reason, I still prefer just to trim the edges neatly with my guillotine. So there's that. I'm just going to take a quick drink while I bring this in. And then we can start to build all of this up. What did I do with my microbeads as well, which are here? Right, let's assemble. Let's take our tape, or your own choice of adhesive. And this would be quite cool as well. Instead of using maybe like the green shimmer spray, you can maybe come in with the, the red or the orangey tones. And same with the cardstock, you could change that to red and oranges and really change the look of it. Be quite funky. Let's take that one. Of course, you can take the, the bats, the bats that you got with the set. It would look quite cool as well. But you could go down maybe like the black tones. Maybe the purples, purple card would work with as well. Maybe black and oh, black and greys. Black and grey with the bats. So let's pop that over there. And then before we build any more, let's do do my insert. I much always like popping it in, even if it's just a blank one for now. I'm going to do five by seven. One here. Five. So that's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Going to be my matte and layer for inside. Travel along. Put that one here. Bring that one in and layer these up. And if you don't have the shimmer sprays, you can then also do, you can also do the water reactive inks. That would be a good one to use as well. So let's take that one off. Start to assemble. So there's the inside. And let's bring these ones all in. And I think by looking, I think my overhead camera is playing up again. Typical. Just as I'm getting to the end of it as well. Absolutely typical. Right, I am I'm going to keep on going just because there's not much more to go. So 
So I'm just going to layer these together. I'm going to come in with my shaker elements. So let's bring in some of the green sequins. Maybe a little bit too much, but remember we have got that extra depth as well. So don't worry about that. I'm going to do some of the clear sequins. Just a little bit though. And then I'm going to create a little hollow center in there. And let's pop some of these microbeads in. I'm doing that in the hollow center because they're tiny little beads. They would just roll about if I don't. So now take the back end of the frame. Let's get the final ones off. Let's tilt. Let's move them into the center, them into there. Press that in, really press that in. So we've now got our shaker element. And then let's bring in our happy Halloween. And then we can finish off there because the camera is playing up. Let's take that off. And that off. I'm going to put that to there, so it overlaps, and that is all that I'm going to do. I'm going to go in front so that we can see it that little bit better. Typical, isn't it? Right, as we get got to the end there, just towards the end there, and the camera plays up. I definitely think I need to ditch that camera now. So there we go. We've got our Halloween shaker card. We've just layered up towards the base just there, creating that extra bit of depth that we've got. But then because we've gone in for like two layers when it comes to the outer and inner frame, what that then enables us to do is uh, pop in even more shaker elements within the centre there. So there we go, five and a half by seven and a half Halloween card. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Sorry, I'm just kind of kind of having to cut it a little bit short, but then there's no point to uh, prolong it when that ain't working because I really need the overhead for you to see exactly what I'm doing properly. But you got the gist of that. You got most of that. Hopefully you got most of that anyway. And then uh, the next time I'll make sure that whatever camera is up above it is working absolutely perfectly. And that one will be in the bin. Right, yo. Right, till next time, we'll see you again. Thank you so much. Actually, while you're on YouTube, if you haven't already, hit that bell, of course, to be notified whenever I pop up any tutorials and hit subscribe as well. So you subscribe to my YouTube channel for all these further uh, tutorials. And then also, while you're there, as if two things wasn't enough, give me a thumbs up too. That would be fab. But until next time, we'll see you again. Bye.